So listen, I got a bunch of questions. You've been asked a lot of stuff about Rebel Moon. I like throwing some curveballs at the beginning. Okay. Besides Rebel Moon, if someone has never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Ooh, probably sent them a dance video of mine from a million years ago. <laughs> totally but movie-wise, I think I'd say, I'd say maybe Climax. Sure. For various reasons, I'd say... Maybe Atomic Blonde. I would say Ill Manners, which was my debut, the first film I ever made. Shot it with my, my friends in London, in my community. First time I ever acted in my life and um, meant a lot to me. Um, and still means a lot to me in terms of like showing my, my, my community and my area and all my friends are in it. So, mm. yeah, Ill Manners. What is the most nervous you've been the be, the night before the first day of filming and it could be this project but like literally like you know you're about to go to set the next day and you're like oh f i'd say deadpool i was like i was really nervous because i love i've been reading deadpool since i was like 10 wow. years old you know i used to go to the comic book fairs and collect them i still got my my, my comics from back in the day so i was like really nervous because i really wanted to do well and um, I think Tim would say the same thing, that like the first day I turned up a bit nervous and I remember him, like we joke about it now, but like he came to me after like two weeks and was like, and was like, I want to let you know, like you are enough and like, I want you to be you and I want you to just like be how you are when we're just talking, messing around and like that, he really filled me with confidence and kind of m made me able to break through that kind of imposter syndrome and um, and then after that, I really did my best work. And some of my favorite scenes in it I, were even when I came back to Vancouver, like six months or a year later for the reshoots. And it was like, I was just super confident, loved all of the crew, loved him and, um, and could hit the ground running. But yeah, that first day I was bricking it. For me, it was definitely this project. The first, I mean, I'm, I'm nervous before each first day of every production that I've been on and even as a dancer, but I, I think it's just a testimony of like just caring and I think for this project it's because of the, the scale of it the size of it and nailing Cora and, and 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 you know to feel like I'm starting you know from a good place and of understanding the character which you you keep finding about the character constantly anyway but I think yeah this one was um, was pretty was pretty nerve-wracking <laughs> so uh, individual question for both of you with this project you you play a character that basically is the the badass. Mm -hmm. When you walk in the room, you can kick everyone's ass mm -hmm. and you need to make the audience believe it. Mm -hmm. So what is it like preparing for a role like that where you need to really believe that you are that person? And for you, you are playing like a real villain and you need to sort of, when you walk in, the audience needs to fear you. So what are you doing before you're stepping on set and during filming that makes it so you command that presence when you are on screen and in the room? I feel like for Cora, the, the, the challenge was also, and what was, I think, for me as an actor, interesting is that I, I, she didn't come from a place of wanting to be a badass, from wanting to 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 be that person anymore. She used to be a soldier. She used to do things that, that she highly regrets and 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 holds with herself in a in a pretty dark place and she she refuses to fight that's what she says at the beginning she's trying to to run away basically but i so it was interesting for me to play that color of like being the badass but that refu that doesn't want any of that so um but in order to do that i think for me it was just conditioning my soul with all of those colors basically but no basically putting in me that all the training that I have had being like younger from such a young age uh, for to be a soldier and to be this this person she has put behind her a long time ago yeah for me you know to be able to you said to be able to command that kind of fear and such it's definitely wasn't a direct intention of mine in, in, in that regard, you know, for me, it's about me understanding what the emotional state of being of the character in that scene is. And if I've got that, I'm super confident. And if I'm super confident, I shall command that respect, you know, plus I, I've got a spaceship behind me. I've got an army. I've got priests. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing like, yeah. you know, tailored stuff, mm -hmm. stepping onto a dusty village, you know, you feel this way, knee high leather boots, you know, 
kinky. Um, <laughs> but like you feel, you feel that way, and it's and it's like, you know, you know that when you step into a movie that the costume department, the makeup department, and then after that, like Tom Holkenberg, Junkie XL is going to make, you know, accentuate the emotion. So they're going to help you so much. Really what you need to be is like secure and confident in your emotional state of being for that scene. So it's kind of like, it's the same if I'm preparing to be, you know, a washed up pop star or a East London drug dealer, whatever it is, it's like, understand what the emotional requirement of the scene is mm -hmm. and then just step in there step in there with confidence and um and that's the thing Cora be. doesn't think that she she's not confident that they can win this at all and um but yeah after that I think it's just the cause that I'm defending in the film defending the the less the less equipped the ones that need it the most and the cause like from the fir the first scene that is very important to that it keeps happening to people and women in general. So besides Rebel Moon, I, I'm a big fan of, of Zack Snyder and his films, his filmography. What's the film that you think if, you, if someone has never seen a Zack Snyder movie, mm -hmm. what's the film they should start with? Watchmen. Watchmen. <laughs> Ooh! cut. Yeah, right no, yeah. 100%. Million percent. Yeah. 100 percent. It's the greatest, man. It's the greatest, like, it, it changed the game. I remember when it came out, and I don't know, it was like 20 years ago now? Uh, I don't think it was Less. 20, but it, it's, I'm going to say it's 10, At least, 12. Right? You I don't yeah. remember. I feel like more than that. Even. I want to say 2010, 20, oh no, uh, two, 2009. I think it might have been 08 or something, but yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. I apologize. Either way, like 15 years or something. I really um, like Alan Moore. and I have, the, oh. I have, I have this, uh, this book at home that I've had for a long time called Lost Girls. Have you ever seen it? Anyway, but I've like I, I just thought it was such a such a good take on 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 Watchmen, basically. Alan Moore, British British <laughs> yeah. legend, one of the greatest. Why are there so many good comic book writers from England, man? Uh, all good. It's the, it's the water and the is? weather. Do you think? No, but you know what's <laughs> interesting is like I, I saw some someone talking about parallels with like Grant Morrison and uh, Gaiman and uh, Moore and all these people that so many of them grew up in like were informed so much by Thatcher's Britain and how oppressive it was. And also so many of them grew up near power stations and nuclear power stations and had this idea of like the, that, um, it, and the backdrop of, sorry, the cold war, where it's like the world could end. So they had these apocalyptic ideas mixed yeah. with this post-war British sensibilities. It's like a really interesting notion. I'm just about out of time, so I want to ask real fast for both of you. What is a scene in both part one and part two that you cannot wait for audiences to see? I said that before. For me, it's, I mean, I just have such a, just, just, just a dreamy and powerful feel from the very last scene between uh, Belisarius and Noble. And because... Because I've had it in my trailer, I had the photo that Zach drew in my trailer for the longest time. I had like photos, I mean images from so many different scenes, but this one was very. There's something special about it because it takes place on a on a frozen lake and the koi fish uh, underneath it, mm -hmm. and just just the color, the the grading of this whole scene and what it is about and what it says. I, I think that I mean I just I remember loving that scene. I couldn't wait to see it, and when I saw it, it really I mean it marked me. And from movie number two, do you know, I, that's the thing, you know, I, I, I a part of me forgets what happens, I think, in number two, because I haven't seen it yet. Oh, no, we haven't totally. seen it yet. We haven't seen it, but my but, answer for number two was going to be, I don't want to give it away. Yeah, no spoilers. Well, we know that there's, gonna, you can assume there's going to be more action. Yeah. And, th and there's like. You know, me and Sophia got to, 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 to do some, some dancing as such in number two. And like, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for that. But also the build up to that, there's many little dances happening, let's mm -hmm. say, which I'm like super hyped about. There is, I mean, I think, I mean, that's in a more sentimental way, but there is a scene in movie number two where we're all gathered before the final fight and, and, the core of the of the army, which is the rebels, ha get together and share something very personal about themselves. And I remember shooting that scene and how everybody poured their heart and soul into into that moment. And I and I, I haven't seen it, but I can't wait to see this moment. I feel like it's going to carry movie number two on a deeper level mm -hmm. and join everybody together, but also make people understand everyone and. Um, and hopefully 
sort of, I don't know, it, I think it, it, it joins everything, that scene. That's how I saw it when I worked on it. So mm. I, I can't wait to see it. I look forward to I it. I remember reading that scene in the screenplay and being like, damn, this is deep. This is going to be an amazing one to yeah. shoot. Kind of like an actor's dream, to mm -hmm. be honest. Conversational piece. It makes you care so much about what unfolds after. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I remember when you guys were shooting it, and I obviously wasn't in that day, and I remember thinking, this is this... I, I hope it goes well for them. I hope they enjoy it because this is some deep stuff. But very quickly, my, my scene from part one, which I can't wait for people to see, and especially in the extended cut, is um, the scene in my bed chambers with the alien tentacles. Sure. <laughs> you're exactly which you're is talking. not so deep. Sure. I got to I have to stop there. Um, uh, congratulations on the movie. I really do hope it's a huge hit for you guys. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.